Grow lights make plants grow. Ding. Okay, so you knew that already, but we're talking about growing plants indoors here with no help from the sun. The more light we can give our plants, the more produce we can enjoy. No wonder then that indoor growers can't get enough of high-pressure sodium grow lamps. Why? Because they're the most efficient way of creating light for plants, especially when you need a whole lot of it. HPS beats every other competing artificial light source hands down. Listen to this. Old-school domestic incandescent bulbs are just 7% efficient. That means 93% of the electricity they use is wasted as heat. Metal halide and fluorescent grow lamps are much better, both offering 35% efficiency. LEDs, often touted as the most efficient, are actually just 30% efficient. Sure, LEDs tend to be lower wattage overall, but remember, we're talking about efficiency in terms of the number of lumens generated per watt of electricity. I know. Lumens aren't the best measurement of lighting in terms of plant response, but don't worry, we'll come back to that. For now, just take note of this number, 40%. Oh, that's right, HPS grow lamps are 40% efficient. Now that is pretty impressive. Now, just because they're so efficient, don't think that high-pressure sodium lamps are something new. They're not. They were first developed in the late 1950s for street lighting. However, these days, HPS lamps are used for many other applications, including horticulture. And special HPS lamps have been designed specifically with growing plants in mind. So, how do HPS lamps actually work? Well, all the action really takes place here, inside the arc tube. That's the milky white cylinder you can see in the middle of the lamp. The arc tube is made from a super tough polycrystalline alumina. It's essentially a pressurized vessel filled with xenon gas and a very precise mixture of sodium and mercury metals. HPS lamps come under the general category of high intensity discharge lamps. A miniature bolt of man made lightning, sometimes referred to as plasma or an arc stream, is generated by sending a series of high voltage electrical pulses between the two electrodes at either end of the tube. We're talking serious voltage here, between 4,000 and 5,000 volts. This is what is needed to create an arc stream of raw electricity through the xenon gas. Now, obviously, your regular domestic electricity isn't going to cut it. That's typically only between 110 or 240 volts. So, a special device called a ballast is used to modify the voltage in order to create the required voltage for the ignition pulse. The xenon gas inside the arc tube is inert. Even with all those volts passing through, it doesn't change. It merely acts as a carrier for the electrical flow between the two electrodes. The arc stream is really hot. It causes the mercury to heat up and after a few seconds, the mercury starts to emit a bluish light. Then, when the arc tube gets even hotter, the sodium starts to react, producing the distinctive orange glow. The polycrystalline alumina arc tube material is able to withstand not only the really high temperatures, up to 1300 degrees Celsius, yeah, but it also needs to resist the highly corrosive sodium. As the arc stream intensifies, the ballast reduces power to the lamp. The typical operating lamp voltage is just 250 volts in order to maintain the arc stream and provide full output from the lamp. Now, you might still be wondering, why does the sodium and the mercury inside the arc tube produce any light at all? Well, the electrical flow through the pressurized arc tube releases some electrons from their atom bonds. These free electrons collide with other electrons that are still bound to atoms, knocking them out of orbit for a brief moment. When the bashed electron snaps back into its orbit around the nucleus, energy is released in the form of a photon of light. The arc tube is pressurized because this increases efficiency. More pressure means there are more molecules jammed into the arc tube for the arc stream to interact with, creating more light. Okay, that's enough already about how HPS lamps work. Let's get back to our grow rooms. Now, we already know that HPS lamps are efficient, producing between 85 and 150 lumens per watt. For instance, a 600 watt Hortolux Super HPS lamp produces 88,000 lumens, and a 1,000 watt Hortolux Super HPS produces a staggering 145,000 lumens. However, as I said earlier, lumens per watt are just part of the story. Lumens are a measurement of light intensity based around the human eye, whereas plants want PAR, or photosynthetically active radiation. The gold standard is natural sunlight, and this is made up of different wavelengths or colors of light. Plants only respond to light between 360 and 760 nanometers. Back in 1971, a famous scientist named Dr. Keith McCree performed a whole bunch of tests and created the plant sensitivity curve, also known as the McCree curve. 
You can see that plants respond well to purplish blue light and even more to orange red light. Thus, a truly efficient grow light is not only good at converting electricity into light, but into the right spectral distribution of light. If you happen to have a spectroradiometer lying around in your garage, you can chart the spectral distribution of your grow light and overlay it on the McCree curve. The closer they match, the better it is for growing plants. Most growers, however, would use a PAR meter, also known as a quantum meter. A PAR meter basically counts the photons that lie within the range of 400 and 700 nanometers. That number, typically expressed in micromoles or PAR watts, is a far better indicator of light intensity and quality when it comes to growing plants. However, your PAR meter counts all photons in between 400 and 700 nanometers as equal. So, when lamp manufacturers try to sell you their lamps based on PAR alone, Understand that a high PAR value doesn't necessarily equate to higher yields. In nature, the angle of incidence of the sun changes through the season. Light gets filtered differently through the Earth's atmosphere based on the tilt of the Earth's axis. The higher the sun in the sky, i.e. in spring and summer, the bluer the light. The lower the sun in the sky, think late summer and fall, the yellower the light. Plants have evolved to be more efficient at absorbing the yellow-orange light during the fall because it's less intense. However, plants grown under a balanced, broad-spectrum light source invariably grow healthier, stronger, and more disease-resistant than plants grown under more limited spectrums. That's why lamp manufacturers such as Hortilux have created enhanced spectrum HPS lamps with up to 25% more blue than before. We'll be testing out these lamps, and others, in the Just for Growers indoor garden. So, make sure you subscribe for regular updates. I'm sure you've got a ton of questions, so post them below or chime in on our Facebook group. Don't forget to watch our other videos, and thanks for watching. This is Everest, and you've been illuminated. Oh.